This is Jenna Burt, host of the Confessions of a Military Spouse podcast. Thanks for listening to the following broadcast on Public House Media. Hey, you're listening to Let's Hustle with Lee and Chelsea. We are two girls making our way in sales and entrepreneurship. We set out to make this podcast after entering our late 20s and realizing we were hitting a wall and felt like our lives and careers were stagnant. After expressing this feeling to countless other women, we realized we weren't alone. So each week we're bringing you real conversations with real people that are authentic, realistic, and relatable in hopes that you can grow into the best version of yourself. So strap in and let's hustle. Everybody, it's Lee and Chelsea. Hello, welcome to the show. <laughs> Here we are again for another week of Let's Hustle. Woo! Yep. Yeah. We're working on show tunes. It's like a new thing. Yeah, no we deal. really want to make a theme song that we've written personally. Yeah. We don't, actually. We just made that up. Mm-hmm. Um, but it is another week, and we're happy that you're here, and we're happy that you're back. And it's been like a pretty decent week. Mm-hmm. Honestly. Really, it has. How have you been? I've been great. Good. I've been great. Um, Let's just have some confession time. Let's do it. Okay. Well, so I have been with the COVID-19. My cells have been down. It's not a surprise. I'm not ashamed. It's just a thing, right? Yeah, everyone. Yeah. Well, I was like, I don't know if I'm going to make it to P-Club. Well, now I have a legitimate shot to make it to Presence Club again. And so I'm hustling my butt off and I'm going to make it happen. Good. That's, yeah. that's huge. Cause well, I think that there's just a lot of, I mean, uncertainty and not people are not doing well right now. So if you can find that little silver lining of, you know, getting back on track. Yeah. Good for you. I'm proud of Thank you. you. It's like, yeah. it's hard because year after year, it's like, it's going to happen. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. And then it's like, well, what if I don't, what if I can't like, all hope for me is lost and then becomes a just a really negative thought pattern and it's mm-hmm. just it's not good and it's okay to fail and it's okay not to be the best all the time that's how you get better yeah so that was like i think my my trial for 2019 2020 good job yeah, my confession just became a soul search, so. No, that's amazing. Good for you. <laughs> Good for you. Yeah, so tell well, me about you. Um, I, I think that I've mentally been in a lot better space um, than I have been recently. We just found out that we are um, the place that I cocktail serve in downtown Louisville. Um, we are furloughed until July, and I don't know if you guys know this or not, but it's only May 20th. So I was kind of dreading that was going to happen, but... But I also, I think that I'm okay with it because I now I'm like, oh my gosh, I've made it through two months. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I've had some mental breakdowns, but I think that I have gotten into a routine now. Yeah. And even if that routine is waking up and sitting on my couch and just drinking coffee until noon and then getting my day started, like, I mean, that's just kind of what I've been there's just so doing. much pressure to, to be doing it a certain way. Exactly. And so I've Garbage. been able to kind of find that. And I've been having a pretty good week. I've been very productive. I've been very inspired this week to work on my business a lot more. And so, and that's good. I was missing that motivation. Mm-hmm. And I think now I'm like, oh, it's about to be June. Mm-hmm. You need to get your stuff together because you're about to be 31 next month. So. I'm excited for it. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, and I think too... Are you ready for this? Are you ready oh. for this transition? I think this really leads into our guest today on oh, the show. Smooth, <laughs> um, I mean, so we have this incredible guest today, Mary yes. Barron. Yes. She is a jiu-jitsu fighter who lives in Austin, Texas. Grew um, up in Kentucky. Grew up in Kentucky. Kentucky gal. Mm-hmm. Um, and she is just, I loved this interview with her so mm-hmm. much. I think that she's so smart. She has such just a freaking, like, spitfire attitude. I that's love that. So, oh, it's just, like, inspirational to yeah. like, meet other people that are like, nope, I've decided I want to do this. I'm going to do it. Yeah. And I'll give a F what you think. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. So, There's some really good golden nuggets in here. Really, really good golden nuggets. So. 
Yeah. So um, without further ado, I guess. Yeah, let's bring her in. Let's bring her in. Bring and you guys, out, bring can, <laughs> this is our this is our interview with uh, Mary Bear. joining us. Thanks for having me. Yeah, so Mary is really awesome. I work with her cousin, Adam, and that's how I learned about Mary, and he was telling me how amazing and bad his cousin is, but (laughs) she's this awesome fighter, and she could take anybody down, and she's like tough, and I was like, Adam, what? And he's like, yeah, I was at a, I think it was a wedding, and you put him in a headlock, and I was (laughs) like, I wish someone would have recorded that. So I was like, she has to come on our podcast. And at Thanksgiving, we'll we'll get it on our board for you. Perfect. <laughs> Can't wait. <laughs> but yeah, so thanks for coming today. Um, you're in a little bit of a different industry than most people we have on the podcast, and I'm really excited about it. Um, you're a female jujitsu fighter. You're successful. You have quite a following, and so we want to talk about that and see where you started, how you've got to where you are. And I feel like fighters have the best stories. So entertain (laughs) us. Yeah. (laughs) So, um, you just want me to start with how I got involved, right? Yeah, Yeah, absolutely. Or wherever you want to begin. Yeah. Well, originally, um, I was actually dating a guy in Kentucky because I live in Austin, Texas right now. And um, I moved here to go to grad school a couple years back. I've now since graduated and working, you know, as an occupational therapist. But I was dating a guy um, in Kentucky who was into jujitsu and Muay Thai um, or kickboxing. And I wasn't, you know, I grew up with four brothers. I've always been like rough and tumble, played in sports, you know, but he didn't really encourage me at that time to get involved in jujitsu. I was doing other things, right? But when I moved to Austin, there was a gym here called 10th Planet that he had been following for a while. So when he came to visit me, he talked me into going to take a class, which I mean, I would have wanted to go, but I was studying for school and I was so stressed. And he's like, please just come. And so I went one time and I loved it. Unfortunately, my schedule in grad school did not allow me to return again for another like two years. Um, I hate that (laughs) because I would be two years further along now, you know, Mm -hmm. but as soon as I graduated, like as soon as I graduated, I studied a little for the boards and then I just did jujitsu for like, I think two or three months. It took like a month, a little less than a month to study for the boards. And then I just don't even feel like I applied for jobs (laughs) for like a month and a half. I was like, um, fuck this. I'm done. Um, (laughs) you know, I'm done studying. I don't want to work for a minute. Like I had a little money. I was like, I'm just going to train. And so I went back to the same place, 10th planet. And I started training and there was, um, there was a girl there who is now the wife of the guy that owns 10th planet Austin. And she kind of took me under her wing. And so after class, she would work with me, um, on what's called the warm ups. So 10th planet has a system where, um, you know, if y'all have ever done yoga, there's certain yoga flows, right? You can learn flows. Well, in jujitsu, there are flows that are created in the 10th planet system of like, you know, jujitsu rolls. So you practice these certain moves so you can understand that this move can lead to this move, which can lead to this submission or it can lead to this submission. So it's a way of you to kind of learn this various moves without going a hundred percent. So it, it kind of looks like choreographed jujitsu which essentially that's what the warm-ups are you're learning the positionings okay so she would work with me on that for a couple hours after class um which is um, very generous uh there was no extra cost for that they just wanted to invest in me and bring more girls into the program um which so that was an amazing privilege um that got me hooked so even when I started working I stuck with jujitsu well, that girl, her name's Priscilla. Um, she has an amazing following on Instagram. I think maybe at the time she, I don't know, maybe she had 50,000. Now she has, I think, 75. And she encouraged me. She's like, look, I started, um, cause her husband had encouraged her to like make videos, make content. One, it helps his business, right. Um, mm-hmm. for people to see what's going on there. And then also to encourage females to get involved in the sport. But two, if you're making videos, um, 
you want to do it right. So it's causing you to practice over and over and over and over. So especially in the beginning, it would take me like 30 minutes to get a video right. So I'm naturally drilling more, if that makes mm-hmm. sense. Yeah, absolutely. Well, um, so I just started, you know, I had like a regular Instagram, um, you know, just post stuff, my life, my dog mainly. And then um, I maybe had like a thousand followers. And then um, after being in videos with her and then starting just post what I was doing, just post my practice. Um, especially after she put me in some of her videos, I mean, like I would get in the beginning a couple hundred followers overnight, a couple, you know, up to a thousand followers overnight in the beginning when like, you know, none of her followers are following me yet. And so, um, so Instagram kind of like did its own thing as far as a following and to be honest, I mean, to be a female in a male dominated sport, uh, Guys are guys, right? So yeah. they're like, oh, there's a girl in my sport, you know? And a bunch of jujitsu guys are like huge nerds. They're huge nerds. And which is, I do not say that in a belittling way. Uh, those are some of my favorite people. Um, they've got depth to them, some intelligence to them, you know? And, but they're like, oh, girl, a girl in my sport. And so that, you know, it's like, I wasn't good at jujitsu, but they were following me, yeah. you know? Um, and, so anyway, so I just posted, that's all it was for the first six, seven months, um, which I've been doing jujitsu about a year and a half, maybe a year and seven months now, I think. I started in October of 2018. Um, and so, so it was kind of an effortless thing at first. And then um, now it's become something different. It's shifting form for me um, because there, I want to go somewhere with it, um, both in the sport in general, I've been in sports my whole life. Um, I was a track athlete in college. So I, I was pole vaulter, ran track. I did track and uh, volleyball in high school. And then I was a gy- competitive gymnast for seven years before that. Um, so sports, getting back into a sport at, I guess I started, I started the month before I turned 30. Um, God, I, I like miss sports. I didn't have sports for like eight years, you know, from 22 to 30. Mm-hmm. So being back in a sport was amazing. So like my goals for that have always been compete, compete, compete. So within the first year, I had 17 different matches, which was so fun. Yeah. You know? Um, so my goals there are definitely like, I would like to have my black belt before I'm 40, which will be a, a, a miracle. <laughs> um, it takes a while in jujitsu. It's not like karate. Like if you tell people – yeah. Oh, I got a black belt. People are like, Oh, my 12 year old son has a black belt in karate. Not belittling that. It's not the same thing. Mm-hmm. You know, it takes years and years and years to get these. Um, so it'd be, I'd have to work really hard to get that before I'm 40, but like, I would love to continue to compete and on a professional level, but in the reality of it to make money in jujitsu, just doing the sport, that's not usually where you're going to get your money. I would have had to start a lot earlier right? Mm -hmm. To end up being good at an age where I could compete at a level where I'd make money. Does that make sense? Mm Yes, absolutely. Age will probably beat me out a little bit before I'm good enough to compete at a really high level. Yeah. Um, so that being said, the way I can make a career if I want jujitsu to be more of my life and I do. So I hope y'all can follow me. I know I'm jumping around a little bit, but no, we're with you. We're totally with you. Awesome. I, I want to train more. So to train more, jujitsu has to be able to bring more into my life or win the lottery or something or get a really cool sugar daddy or something like that. But, you know, that's <laughs> long. Um, but I, um, so I was like, all right, how can I make a living doing what I already love to do with jujitsu? So, um, Instagram is kind of a good way to do that. So, um, so my goals with Instagram have kind of shifted a little bit, you know, uh, of course, you know, trying to get some sponsorships and, um, I I already, you know, get a lot of free things sent to me, which is great. And I appreciate that. Um, but you know, you want to build something that can pay for what I'm doing. Does that make sense? Absolutely. So do y'all want me to just keep going? Cause I can rattle off about this for a while. No, please. Uh, This is like, I want to hear how you build it, how you get your sponsors and then you know, I want to talk about what goes into your practicing too. Sure. So right now, as far as like sponsorships and stuff, that's something I'm working on as, uh, people reaching out to me and sending me free things, um, and working with me in that way that started early on, um, a couple brands in particular, um, that doesn't mean you make money from it. Mm-hmm. It means you save money by not spending. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, so I am in the process of kind of building, all right, 
how am I going to go about this and be affiliated with different companies? And what am I willing to do? Like, instead of people will always ask you to do stuff for free for them. Right. Mm -hmm. So what am I willing to say? Hey, I'm actually worth this much right now for you. Cause I get this many views and, um, I can have this much pull for you. Um, so here's what it costs for me to do this post. For you. I'm not there yet. It's a little uncomfortable for me to, ask that, but I've got some people in my life who, um, do those things for a living and are speaking with me. And as my following has grown, I will feel more comfortable really breaking into making money in that way. Um, what I've looked at separately from that to make money from is to have my, I've encouraged, been encouraged for a while to have my own rash guard company. So rash guards are what we wear. I don't do traditional Brazilian jujitsu, which is in the gi, which is like a karate outfit looking thing mm -hmm. for, if you don't know what a gi is, um, we wear spandex, we call them spats, um, pants. They're a little more, um, they're not like yoga pants. They're not cottony. They're more like sl sl slidey, mm -hmm. slidey. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> okay. Um, and thinner than that. And then, um, the rash guards are kind of like what you would see, uh, like a sun shirt, somebody would wear in the sun, you know, yeah. it's very similar and you wear that so that you're not getting like staff or ringworm or other yeah. people sweat all over your body. Okay. <laughs> um, so I've been working with a different company for a while doing their gear. It's actually this right here, supernatural survival gear. Cute. I love the owner of this company. We have a great relationship, Kim Peters. Um, and I've encouraged by him, by some other people to really start my own brand. That's a cool thing about him is he's all about it for me to be successful too. Um, so my roommate and I have talked about it for a while. Her name's Lexi and she is does some graphic designing and we are like, all right, what do we want this to be called? And originally it was dog bite BJJ, Brazilian mm -hmm. Jiu Jitsu. Mm -hmm. And I went ahead and bought like the domain name, the email, got the Instagram, but didn't post anything. Um, then quarantine happened. And so we, this has been in the work for months. Okay. Quarantine happened and it was like, Oh shit, that's like the perfect time mm -hmm. to try to build some content here. Okay. So all right, follow along with me here. Our gym is like, they're brilliant. When we couldn't, um, train anymore, they broke down the mats and gave them to different members. So they could have little covert gyms across the city. Oh so gosh. people could still come and train in like, uh, numbers of 10 or less when that was, that was before the, like the shelter in place, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, well, I asked some people to move in with me because since I am a healthcare worker and in the beginning before we had all the information about COVID-19 and how serious or non-serious it was, I had to take the highest precautions, right? So I had people move in with me before lockdown. So I had my original roommate already. Then I got a black belt coach to move in with me and three other teammates. And we made a little dojo um, in our garage. So the mats are down. We've got stuff for striking, stuff for jujitsu. We've got steel maces, um, kettlebells, clubs, things to do like body weight workouts. Mm -hmm. um, and they all like were like, yeah. And I said, okay, look, at our place, we can't rotate people in and out because I still see elderly patients. So stick in place. Let's do this and let's do it safely in the beginning. We've opened up things now because we have more information about COVID-19 and how we mm -hmm. specifically feel about it and mm -hmm. if it's bullshit or not, blah, blah, blah won't get into all that, but, um, we did it safely in the beginning. And, um, and so I've got to train every single day. Well, every little covert gym was named something. So we named ours, the dog bite dojo. And so me and Lexi decided let's change the name of our brand. We haven't made anything yet. Make it the dog bite dojo. So if you have looked at that Instagram, the dog yeah. bite dojo, I don't know if y'all have seen it yet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, basically me and my roommates, um, all throughout quarantine, like the workouts we've been doing, Viking Ninja workouts, yoga, um, the jujitsu tutorials, which are amazing that we have a black belt that does that. Um, you know, and even the dance things we've been doing, you know, some of us have been learning in dance classes via, you know, the internet and stuff like <laughs> stupid shit like that, or what we're eating or, um, you know, fucking around at the house, you know, um, it's kind of been our lifestyle and people have really jumped on it. It's been amazing. But so quarantine kind of provided the opportunity to start creating content for that page um, before we put out our merchandise. And so also quarantine provided time for her and I to collaborate, decide we want our gear to look like and who we want to manufacture it. So right now we're waiting on samples to come in and we'll review those and then we'll order our product, do pre-orders. But we've already like put the word out with some people. Um, about our product coming in and then we'll put it on, you know, our Instagram account with those followers and of course on mine and um, hopefully get a good like pre-order going. All that being said, 
I'm hoping that's a way to supplement using my jujitsu, um, some income to where I can work less, train more. Does that make sense? Work less at my regular job, even though I love my regular job, Mm -hmm. but training is like a priority to me. Um, and that was kind of a long way to get there, but, um, (laughs) (laughs) no, you're kind of just a lot of those things, but, um, people are, we're getting an amazing response. I, I wasn't expecting that on dog bite dojo. Like people message me personally. And then they message that page saying, thank you all so much. Like jujitsu is like a religion to people, mm-hmm. you know, like I, I don't, I don't know y'all personally. So I don't know what that thing is in your life that has been taken away during quarantine that makes it feel like you're dying or lonely or, um, without your family, you know? Yeah, absolutely. It's really hard. Um, Girly oh, wow. I didn't that. see the emotional, but, um, no, you're good. a lot of people message me, you know, they're depressed without jujitsu. Mm-hmm. It's, it's so much more than a sport. Um, I mean, it works you so much mentally and physically, but you become a family because you are putting yourself in precarious positions every day mm-hmm. in jujitsu. People could hurt you badly. You could hurt them badly, but it's a respect thing that you learn, you know, and people are there for you in vulnerable times. Mm-hmm. Um, it truly is a family. It's, I don't know how to explain that to people that haven't done it, you That's know, amazing. um, it's, there's something there when, when somebody has the power to choke you out, kill you. Okay. <laughs> or to break your arm. Um, yeah. and they don't, <laughs> you know, and, <laughs> you know, like accidents happen We, you know, there's always that one person in the gym that comes in and you're like, that person cannot come back cause they're here to hurt people. You know, th- things yeah. like that happen, but amongst your core people, um, especially at our gym, like people have your back. You know, they're pushing to grow you and jujitsu is such a humbling sport. Yeah. Cause people can come in and have a natural ability, but somebody's always going to come in and crush them. Mm-hmm. Always. Yeah. Always. That's you know, life in general. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I, we've had an outpour of people who just, they're without jujitsu. They're without, I think this has been the hardest part of COVID for me is watching the loneliness, loneliness spread across the world, yeah. you know, um, somewhat unnecessarily, you know, but how many people are lonely and how much like suicide has increased and domestic violence has increased because Mm -hmm. of this. And, um, to feel like our page has encouraged people through, I couldn't believe it. If anything, I was worried people would be like, fuck, I don't want to watch them because I'm having FOMO. You know, I was kind of worried about that. Yeah. But I had one person say that to me and people be like, Oh, we're jealous of your, you know, dojo and we'd love to join. But people are more just, I think they feel a part of something mm-hmm. watching us. And um, I just was not expecting that. Yeah. And it's awesome. been super, um, well, I wasn't expecting to get emotional about it either. Uh, well, no, I mean, it's a really emotional thing. And I think that the fact that you're putting something out there that you're so passionate about and when other people connect to that and can see that, it's a really powerful thing, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it, it's more fulfilling than I I, I, to be honest, that wasn't, I, I just did not think it was going to necessarily be encouraging. I thought, oh, people like this will be entertaining. Hopefully it will drive people to our page and then they'll be there when our brand comes out. Um, so it's like, it's way more than that. And, mm-hmm. um, and yeah, the page just has what, 2000 followers since we started like two months ago, nothing in the grand scheme of things, but it's, it's the messages that we get it's the messages that I get personally on my page saying like, thank you all so much for what you've done with the dojo and, um, people wanting to come visit the dojo, which is in my garage. You know what I mean? Like our garage looks like shit. Um, (laughs) They they want to come to the dojo. They, they want a t-shirt from the dojo. They want to support the dojo. And like, I've had people send us gifts from California, like sending, um, like these sports bombs Mm -hmm. and like CBD, you know, like, um, you know, little CBD vials and, you know, the THC sports bombs. And then somebody's sending stuff for my dogs that has like this, the four to one ratio of CBD to THC for like, cause my dog's elbow was hurt. You know, like people are sending us gifts, That's you know, people so sending nice. us sports drinks. People are sending us uh gear, super like Kent Peterson, everybody, the dojo gear. Like it's, I don't know. I'm kind of going off track probably with this, but no, um, no, 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 you're good. Um, I had a, um, could for sure. I had a question. Um, cause I yeah, know that no we've been talking a lot about, you know, the impact that jujitsu, jujitsu, why is it so hard for me to say that word? Um, jujitsu <laughs> can have on people and how you've created this community, I guess for people who aren't very familiar with like martial arts and, you know, with fighting in general, what is 
kind of the main difference between jujitsu and other forms of fighting? Just maybe like layman's terms. <laughs> Let me preference this with this is my first experience with any martial arts. Okay. Mm-hmm. So I am probably not super qualified to answer, but, but I should know the answer here. So um, what you see in the UFC, I mean, you've seen, you seen a UFC match, right? Mm-hmm. Um, that's Mix, you know, that's mixed martial arts. That's a mix of multiple martial arts, right? So you got like Muay Thai, I think kickboxing, jujitsu, um, maybe a little judo in there if somebody's doing a throw. I'm not sure of all the rules of the UFC, okay? Um, mm-hmm. Jujitsu, you're not hitting each other, all right? And it's not wrestling. Wrestling and jujitsu are two different goals here, okay? Wrestling, nobody arm bars you or chokes you, to my understanding. Um, Jiu-jitsu, they call it like the, the, I think the gentle dark arts. Um, it's like a chess match. Okay. You can start, you can be standing, but mainly we go to the ground and you're grappling. You are trying to tie up an arm, tie up a leg, get it into a position where the person has to submit. So an arm bar would be in a position where I could break your arm. Um, an Americana would be in a position where somebody can tear my, you know, tendons or, um, ligaments in my, elbow, which actually happened last night. Um, you know, a, an ankle lock, somebody can break your ankle, a choke, they can, you know, hurt your trachea or they can, you black out. I blacked out a couple times, you know? Um, but you're not like, nobody's punching me in the face. If I get hit in the face, it's an accident. Like somebody's knee hit my face when they're coming across. Okay. Mm-hmm. So the goal isn't to knock somebody out. There is a branch of the sport now called combat jujitsu where they allow you to do open palm hitting. So basically these grown ass men are like slapping each other, which is kind of funny to watch. <laughs> but, uh, to me, I mean, it's a cool part of the sport, but it's just kind of funny. But, um, <laughs> But basically, jujitsu, not you're not hitting each other. So the way to win is by submission. Um, there's some tournaments where you have to win. You can win by points where you, the, you and I are rolling. Um, that's what you call it when you're competing. You're rolling, um, not doing drugs. <laughs> right. <laughs> when I talk, not doing right. drugs. I'm like, like what? Um, so uh, you, we may not submit each other depending on the, the competition. Some competitions do points, and so certain positions give you more points than others. Um, Tenth Planet Jiu-Jitsu really prefers submission-only competitions, um, or I prefer them. Uh, you have got to win by submission, or you go into overtime, and you win by escapes. So if I have my arm around your neck and I'm on your back, in layman's terms, I'm choking you. Mm-hmm. i got on a piggyback position. You're going to try to escape that. If you can escape it without me submitting it and vice versa, it's whoever's escape time is fastest. That's what would happen in the overtime, EBI overtime. Hmm. Anyway, there's a lot of ways to win in jujitsu, but jujitsu is normally it comes to the ground. Um, no punching, no kicking, but there is a lot of strategy how to isolate an arm, isolate a leg, choke. Does that help a little bit? That, that, so that like, literally is such a good explanation. Yes, absolutely. In the UFC, like before I did jiu-jitsu and I would, uh, I used to work as a waitress, um, and I would watch fight night at the bars and, um, like when I was working and I'd be like, what are they doing on the ground here? <laughs> it's sometimes we're like, oh, it's the boring part of, uh, UFC, but it's boring because you don't know what's going on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It doesn't even, like, once I started doing jiu-jitsu, I was like, oh shit. And a lot of UFC fighters, I would from, I'm kind of regurgitating information here, but UFC fighters, a lot of them, their weakest martial arts is jujitsu. So that's another reason it looks boring. And they have gloves on, which makes it a lot harder to jujitsu. But you watch like Submission Underground or um, ADCC. These are jujitsu competitions. They're fucking exciting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anyway, for me. <laughs> but so, I hope that explains it a little bit. Yeah. yeah. No, it does. Um, so one of the things as like a female and being in a very male-dominated industry, I'm sure you get a lot of... I'm, I can't say this delicately, so I'm not going to. Even, uh-huh. Yeah. Like creepers. Like, how do you deal with that? I mean, how do you get somebody? Because like, in my world, in sales, a lot of men don't take me serious because I'm a girl and it's just like, mm, whatever. So I can't even imagine how it would be for you being like hot and <laughs> being in like spandex and rolling around. Uh-huh. And, Men are just nasty. And so, like, how do you deal with that? I'd be like, take me serious. I know what I'm doing. I'm good at this. And, like, stop talking to me. <laughs> yeah. You know, so I'm going to approach it in two different ways, like in person and online, okay? 
So there's two different battlefields here for yeah. that. In person, I kind of approach jujitsu like I did going to like a co-ed gym. I say co-ed because I used to do pure bar for a long time. I worked there and like co-owned a studio and um, it's mainly female. So you don't worry about the dudes. So when I, when I went to a regular gym, like a LA fitness or something, I don't make eye contact with the men. I'm not here to talk to you. I'm here to work out. You know what I mean? You kind of have to have like fuck you on your forehead. Um, so when I first even started then that jiu-jitsu, <laughs> I was like, even then, that doesn't work sometimes. Yeah, and, and they come up and talk to you, and you're just like, I sometimes just look them in the eyes, like, I don't speak English. Oh just like God, that. I don't speak <laughs> yes. um, Working. I mean, like, what the fuck? You're like, I'm not here. To, anyway. So, um, it, but at jujitsu, like, of course, I didn't know anybody there at first. So, I went in. I To me, I don't know how it was perceived. I kind of had a little bit of a, probably a cold, uninviting demeanor towards the men um just like kind of hey I'm here but like I didn't make a lot of contact with the guys because you're with your partner like once you pair up you're with your partner so you're not like necessarily with all these different people even though they're around you um if there was a girl there that's what I paired up with if not coach would pair me up like a dude okay so um I just kind of kept that and didn't really stay after her class and talk too much other than with that girl Priscilla I think at the beginning um because I wanted to be taken seriously and I, I know how it feels to not be taken seriously, you know? Um, so I kind of knew that might be an issue going in. So I kind of like, I think, I, I don't know how it's perceived kind of set the precedent, but like, I'm not here to get fucked or be fucked or fuck you, or I'm not here for this kind of fuckery. Okay. I'm here to work. Um, mm-hmm. now was it necessary going into 10th planet? No, I, I don't know. Those people are great. Um, I don't think it would have been any different if I wasn't like that. I don't really know. Um, I never had a problem really. Um, and so once I felt comfortable and I made friends with some of the guys, you know, then I just kind of stayed within the people I was comfortable with. And then now I'm just comfortable. Um, I am comfortable around men and in general, I grew up with four brothers. I've been on a co-ed track team through college, you know, so being around men in a physical environment is not strange to me. Mm-hmm. So, um, so that wasn't super intimidating per se for me. Um, and plus I'm here for me. I know what I'm here for. Does that make sense? But, um, in, in person and and our coach does a great job of kind of protecting us, you know, like it's not going to be tolerated if somebody's being perverted or try to cop a feel or, you know what I mean? That's not going to be taught. And I've never had that. Um, I've never had that happen to me in person. Yeah. You know, I've never, because I would, one, never roll with a guy I don't feel comfortable rolling with, whether it's because he's creepy or he just doesn't know his own strength or I think he's kind of spazzy, he could accidentally hurt me, things like that. I'm not going to roll with that guy. Mm-hmm. Um, so in person, other than like when I've gone you know, to competitions, maybe other men are around, I really haven't dealt with it too much, I don't think, with jujitsu because I also think, um, I think it's, it's good for women to walk around with some confidence. And because when you are confident, I think it intimidates men sometimes, oh, especially yeah, if a man is a misogynistic man. or a, yeah. the men that like to control women. Not all, I am not at all saying all men like that is not the case, yeah. but those men tend to back down from women. I think that have, have confidence and can be outspoken, you know? So, um, I feel like my personality is one that is not very inviting for somebody to treat me like that. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. It does. That, I don't mean that, uh, uh, inviting is probably not the word because I don't want to insinuate that other women are inviting men to talk to them like that. No, I think that's that not how I don't know works. what word I'm for, but do you know what I mean? Yes. Like, I think that I, my personality is one that deters men to, from treating me like that. Yes. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, but online that doesn't always come true for them, right? They just see a short blonde girl with a big ass and spandex, you know, <laughs> and on, on there who's like, you know, I'm not the most modest person. Uh, I like to think I'm pretty funny, <laughs> but you know, who knows if they get that from my personality or if they care at all, or if they even know my name. So online it's different, but it's funny because my followers that have been following me for a while fucking know I don't put up that bullshit. So if there's somebody in my DMs that is being highly inappropriate, I will screenshot it. Sometimes I'll leave their name on it. I'll put it on my story and I'll be like, don't be this guy. If they, if I look at their profile and they have like a wife and kids or a girlfriend, I normally not going to go in and uh, be like message their wife per se and like fuck up their day, mm-hmm. but I will message the guy and be like, Oh, Hey, your wife, you know, Melissa said blah, blah, blah. 
you know, I'll, I'll be, I know who your wife is. Stop back, you know, there's nothing about me that said, Hey, send me a dick pic. Yeah. Right. Nothing. <laughs> that is your yeah. problem. That, you know? Yeah. So, um, I'll, I will definitely call people out. I call people out in the comments. In fact, my best friend, <laughs> She doesn't do jujitsu. She's been my best friend for years. She was like, me and my coworkers love getting on your page and reading your responses to people. <laughs> because I do have a lot of, like, assholes or, like, just perverted guys or guys who just think they can get away with saying some things. Some things I just ignore. Like, sometimes you just got to – they won't want attention. Other times I'm like, oh, I have too good of a response to ignore this. So I just, you know, um, put people on blast. So – that's how I deal with that. And I actually had a, I have a follower I've had for, I think since the beginning. Okay. And he's always kind of borderline been a little inappropriate, but nothing like past PG, you know, and who I've joked around with him in the comments a little bit, kept him in check. And he said something the other day that I was like, no, 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 no. And so in the comments, I was like, Davey, you have been with me too long. Like, you know better than this. And I didn't have to tell him what it was about. Nothing. He was like, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Like, you know, That's like awesome. apologizing and, you know, I could like, I could scold one of those guys and they knew what I was talking about. And I've had other people make memes about me. Like in, there's a big jujitsu meme community. And so <laughs> one of the guys made a meme about me. It's like a tiger just basically tearing apart uh, a fuck boy in the DMs. Like don't fuck with me about that. You know, just so if I can, I try to make something into a joke mm -hmm. and if needed, I will embarrass the person if they, if it calls for it, like not in a bully way, but like. You put yourself out there. Mm -hmm. What the fuck are you doing? Yeah, absolutely. you know that make. Am I making sense here? Yes, yes. that's my that's my approach. <laughs> I love that. I one thing I think is really cool about what you do is like the mental strategy that also goes into it, not just the physical. And how would you relate what you do on the mat to just being a human being and being a woman working, making your way through this, like? your past experiences, you know what I mean? Like, how can you relate that? Yeah, like mindset. Fuck. Um, <laughs> there's so much. I'm like, against this. Uh, Jiu-Jitsu is a strategy game. It's a chess match. Uh, strategy is not my strong suit in life. So to be able to practice strategy in, in an area that – in the big scheme of things is not essential, right? It's not essential in the sense that, um, making a wrong move in jujitsu might get me injured, but it's not going to fuck up my financial status. Mm -hmm. It's not going to fuck up my relationships. It's not going to, does that make sense? Like making a wrong move. So it's like a good way for me to practice strategy mm -hmm. yeah. since it's my strongest way. Absolutely. Does that make sense? Low so mistakes, it's, sure. I'm going to strategy with my financial budget. <laughs> <laughs> on my own without any help and then I fuck everything or with my stocks options you know or in buying this new house like let's let's work on some strategy for the first time ever it, it does that make sense I get a I get to use it in a playful way mm -hmm. um and it causes you for me particularly um because I I have to take time to stop and think and be insightful to touch base with how I'm feeling about something um to see if something is authentic to me. I often do not take time to do that. I'm extroverted. I'm a goer. I'm a doer. So if I don't take that time to stop and think, um, I will not progress forward. I will just stay on the same linear plane. Does that make sense in my life? Mm -hmm. So jujitsu to me is very similar. Um, for me to really understand something I just learned in class, I later need to go through it mentally and like visualize in my mind what I did or go study something online. There's so many contents and videos out there. Um, yeah. and tutorial. So the best I find the best for me is to think about it visually. So it, to me, it correlates in my everyday life of like, so I have a boyfriend who's long distance, um, checking in with, instead of going in, checking in with how, how am I feeling about our relationship? How do I feel about where we're going? Are we moving forward? Are we moving back? Am I okay where we at? Or is he okay where we at? Am I only thinking about me? Am I thinking about him? You know, checking in with, with how I feel about a relationship. I think that's something everybody can probably relate to. Mm -hmm. um, it correlates to me with jujitsu because I'm not going to move forward if I don't stop mm -hmm. yes. and, and look at what's going on in jujitsu and in my everyday life. Does that make sense? Absolutely. It does for sure. Yeah. 
and jujitsu is extremely humbling and I'm very competitive. So you probably know this about Adam. He's very competitive. Yeah. Have you met Griffin? Oh, the yes, younger brother? Met Griffin. Yeah, I want to tell you a story. <laughs> okay. Um, so I was at the gym and I was like, Adam, your brother's here. And he's like, I dare you to go up to Griffin and tell him that he is unattractive and that Adam is way more attractive than him. So he wanted me to go tell his brother that I thought he was ugly and that his Look older at, brother was hot. They tell him something believable, Adam. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, for a joke to work, it has to be slightly believable. <laughs> anyway, go ahead. <laughs> That's funny. But so I went and I did it, and it was like the most because I Adam and I like we compete with each other. Like it's just always me and him against each other. So, uh, so I did it naturally. I couldn't not, and it was the most uncomfortable thing. But so yes, I understand. Adam is very competitive. Oh yeah. Um, Adam actually gave me, he's gave me his autograph once when we were, when, cause I'm, God, how old is Adam? 30. Well, he tells everyone 45, but we all know it's like 35. He's older than 30. He's, he's older than 35. Is it he's gotta be like 30. Something like that. Cause he's, he's probably 38, I think. Cause I'm 31. He's, he's definitely more than four years older than me. He, he's between 37 and 38 something like that all right so when we're kids you know he might have been i don't know 17 18 i'm 10 he gives me his autograph tells me he's going to be a professional basketball player one day i think i still have it really. that's awesome anyway but um uh but i'm griffin's age uh his younger brother and uh then long before jiu-jitsu i was beating the shit out of griffin so you just let griffin know next time <laughs> you being gripping at everything that's awesome. so uh he'll he'll you otherwise he'll he'll say that's not true but it is. between you and me like it's definitely true i believe it <laughs> i'm kidding he, he's he's pretty good at some things but um, no we're very competitive i don't know where i was going with that we're a competitive family what was i talking about before that we were Damn. talking about oh, that of good too yeah. and it, it's humbling okay mm-hmm. Uh, so it is very humbling and like learning to lose. And so when I was younger and like college sport, even up into college sports, um, I did not do anything well. Like now to the public, like I'm not going to be a sore loser. I wasn't somebody who was just like, rah, 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 rah. internally, I punished myself. I shit talked myself. Um, very much, very much. It was not a, a healthy thing. But it's funny because when you punish yourself in sports, so like in high school, I would miss a serve in volleyball. Well, I would like run laps on the track for every serve that I missed, and I'd run home and I'd run back. You know, I would like punish my body. Well, people were like, oh, she's so dedicated. You know, she's so driven and cool. Yeah, I was really good in my cardio then, right? But it taught me like the mental state I was in was not healthy. Looking back now, I see that um, it taught me to really not take failure well and let it identify me Mm -hmm. um versus it failure's a thing it's not me failure happened like it's not me and to actually truly believe that it's not just weak people that think that that was really hard for me to let go of like no like all weak people say shit like that i'm not weak and i'm not gonna lose type mentality and to get to a point in my life where it's like um to have the freedom from being identified from failure like to, to me, to have the freedom to detach yourself from an identity of failure when you fail, I think is, uh, not weak at all. It's very wise and much more mature and, uh, helps you grow and handle things and stride, you know, and jujitsu, I, I feel like between the time I, I was done with track at 22 and the time I started jujitsu, um, I went through a lot of therapy for various different reasons and I went through a lot of change in my life and it, jujitsu challenged the new tools I had to deal with things like that. Mm-hmm. And so it's been cool to see, um, because my knee jerk reaction is to like fucking rip into myself, you know, mm-hmm. but being able to like process that, let that emotion come through, get out and then reassess the situation. What am I going to do with that failure? I'm going to assess the video. I'm going to see what I did, what I didn't do. Okay. I need to do more hip workouts because my cardio is shit. You know, or mm-hmm. I need to uh, make sure I'm working more leg locks or does it, does that make sense? So, mm-hmm. um, jujitsu mentality has helped me with those failures. So that definitely correlates over into my regular non jujitsu life because, um, I fail a lot 
in my relationships. Uh, relationships are a big part for me. So whether it's with my family or, or my boyfriend or my friends, relationships is very important to me. And so when I fail in those, um, I would let that define me a lot and define my character. And um, that's no way to grow. That's no way to live. You know, absolutely take responsibility for things that you've done that can be considered failures. I, I do believe that there are things as failures, you know, but um, I'm not somebody who's like, oh, nobody really ever fails. Like, that's bullshit. People fail. We fail. But um, mm-hmm. but it just doesn't have to be defining. I love that. I so, that's, it so, um, makes sense. I, yeah. So I hope that is. That's everything. Yeah. I don't know. Jiu-Jitsu, it forces you to grow in those ways, you know, because like, like I said, failure is an everyday thing in jujitsu. Like last night we have 10 round Tuesday. So you roll 10, uh, t- uh, you have 10, six minute rounds, which is very difficult and draining. And, um, actually last night we didn't do 10 cause we had promotion. So people were getting belted up. You get the next belt level. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, I got tapped a couple times and then I tapped people a couple times. So you're, you're just accepting failure all the time. And they'd be like, all right, all right, well, I learned from that. All right, let's go again, let's go again, let's go again. You get back up, you get back up. You know, not to sound cliche, but you get back up and try again, you know? Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah. Anyway, I hope that answered that question. Oh, no, it completely did. It completely did. Oh, um, which, by the way, just a side note, promotions were last night. And it goes white belt, blue belt, purple belt, brown belt, and black belt. And I got my blue belt last night. Yay! Yes! Oh, my Congratulations. gosh. Congratulations. That's sick. This is, uh, it's basically just a symbol for us who do no gi, because when you wear the gi, you wear the belt, but we yeah. just wear spandex. I love that. We basically look like a bunch of, uh, superheroes out there, so I like to pretend like, but. Yeah, I love it. So the belt is, but anyway. That's awesome. Yeah, that was last awesome. time. Yeah, that's nice. amazing. Congratulations. Yeah. So usually, um, at the end of every interview, we kind of give you a nice little, you know, two minute span of time. Um, we like to call this our yoga time, our free pose time. Um, to where you can kind of use this platform and talk about anything you want. If there's something we didn't talk about that you're really passionate about, if there's a show on Netflix that you just binge that you want to tell everyone to watch, um, kind of whatever you are feeling like you haven't said or that you want to say, um, this is your little couple minute platform. Cool. Okay. Um, I'm probably going to stick on this theme a little bit, but, uh, you know, with quarantine, I know the country, uh, is in all different stages of lockdown and quarantine and opening up. And so here where I'm at, it's, um, it's starting to open up. So I'll start to probably get more patients soon and start to go back to everyday life a little bit more. But those of you who like are still in lockdown, um, we're still without a job for a little while. Uh, this time does not have to be unproductive. It does not have to be completely wasted and lost. Even if up to this point, you've done nothing but sit on the couch and watch Tiger King, you know, like it doesn't, it maybe maybe your goal was to literally let your body recover and relax. That is totally, absolutely fine. Your body needs that too. Your brain needs that too. Um, but what's kept me sane is like daily goals. Now, am I like super structured? Fuck no. <laughs> like, fuck no. But like, I have, like sometimes I've been so frustrated. I'm like, how the fuck is it two o'clock and we still haven't done this, this, and this, and this? But wh- one thing that's kept me sane is you know, I moved these people in, we had goals, we're doing this training, we're doing this workout, or for me, you know, it's with this little side business I'm trying to do, um, or this content I'm trying to put out, or time management skills, which I've been in therapy for for years and still fucking can't get, you know, like, Mm -hmm. um, these little goals, I finally have time to, like, look at and try and kind of, like, play with an experiment why I don't really have a ton of patience, so I don't have a lot of responsibility, real responsibility at the moment, I guess. Mm -hmm. Um, it's like, okay, I, I'm kind of jumping around here, but I have, a, I have some new puppies and they're getting me up every day at seven and then we're going for a walk for an hour. And like, do I like this schedule or I'm going to try something else or things like this that are going to, once your life gets up and normal again, you don't have time to fix or to play with or to adjust. Use that time right now to create those habits Yeah. Yes. or to work focus on those goals, whatever they are. Um, half of my goals have not been accomplished over this time because other goals end up taking their place or they took longer than I thought, or I fucking just played on my phone for too long, you know, but <laughs> I <would> well. encourage, <laughs> you know, whoever's listening, um, it is never too late to start your day and it's never too late to like start some productivity goals, whatever, like whatever it is that will keep you sane. 
in my opinion, over quarantine. Um, God, and, and, and if you're somebody who's not lonely during quarantine, check on your strong friends. Because I, particularly even in the healthcare field, I'm way more worried about the loneliness that is spreading versus COVID-19 that supposedly is, you know, yeah. crazy and spreading. Like, um, this is going to kill people's souls before it. Yeah. Before it kills all of us physically. You know what I mean? So, um, not to be down on that, but just reach out to your strong friends too. And, um, but yeah, keep, I don't know, keep those goals in front of you. That's, that's what we've been doing here. And it's been, I'm, God, I'm so thankful. I couldn't have done it by myself. So I'm glad I've got like, you know, a group of people and I'm fortunate. And I know not every situation is that way, but yeah, that's amazing. Thank you. Where can people find you on Instagram? Um, my personal one is Mary. So M A R Y underscore a underscore B as in Baron or boy. Mm -hmm. Um, and then the dogfight dojo is just at dogfight dojo, which is D O J O. Awesome. And those are my thoughts. Yeah. Yay. Well, Mary, thank you so much for coming on today and talking about something that you're passionate about. I think, I mean, I thought it was so incredible. Yeah. I knew nothing about jujitsu before today. So I am like, <laughs> I'm just blown away at how much trust and passion that this community has. And we really, really appreciate you sharing that with us today. Yeah. And if there's anybody, you know, listening who, uh, especially female, who wants to try and you're worried about it, reach out to me. I absolutely will message you back. I, I love girls into doing this. So Bye-bye. thank you all for having me. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much. Um, and we will be back next week for another episode of Let's Hustle.